Good evening, good morning, welcome to lesson two for PADM 404 in the uh, Penn State Homeland Security Program. Uh, I think we had a good discussion last week and a good overview of the legal frameworks relating to the establishment of the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, this week, we're going to cover not the non-legal, but the non-codified authorities. These are the executive orders that aren't passed by Congress or passed by a legislator, but are still implemented and must be followed by either the employees of the federal government, or can even extend a little bit further out. And wow, what a week. Um, I think, as I mentioned earlier, what happens out in the real world affects what goes on in the, or what goes on in the classroom is imparted by what happens in the real world. This isn't just a purely academic work, academic course. Uh, it's relevant to uh, what goes on in the in the in the real world, as we've seen in this past week, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But overall, uh, just announcements. As I mentioned, I'll, I'll have a job talk. Uh, I think we got some interest, so I'll shoot for that in late late April or mid April time frame, and we'll talk about careers in the federal government. And I've had some people ask me about careers in the federal government or getting jobs or job interviews. Uh, feel free to to shoot me that as well, or ask me those questions. I I think I'm uh, more of a resource, uh, not just in the classroom, but in the in your greater uh, career opportunities and job opportunities as well. Uh, and then the second announcement, I mentioned this in the discussion, new executive orders. So in lesson two, a bunch of the Obama executive orders obviously are no longer linked to the current White House. Uh, you have to go to the uh, you know, White House archive uh, links that I sent previously. Uh, so j just keep that in mind. Uh, all those, those directives I'll talk about in a second, they're now under the White House archive dot, dot gov and not the, the current uh, current links. So review of the past week, intelligence sharing. Um, you know, I didn't want a Monday morning quarterback, and I think some people did, and it's okay. But, you know, the the, the pre-9-11 intelligence issues were before 9-11, before we had an emphasis on terrorism, before we had massive funding, before there was an emphasis on intelligence sharing. Um, so I, I think you, you, you have to give people who are trying to piece together 9-11 plots or other plots before 9-11 to give them a little bit of benefit of a doubt. Uh, and I will give them a little bit of benefit of the doubt. What I will not excuse, and again, there's certain things you, you can excuse, certain things you can't, is that the National Security Agency was aware of communications between 9-11 hijackers inside the United States and known Al-Qaeda safe houses in Yemen. Um, this was known by the National Security Agency, and the, several of these people were ended up being on the 9-11 hijackers. And this information was not passed to the FBI, local law enforcement, for further scrutiny. That, that is unacceptable, even in the pre-9-11 era. Um, so that's the, I, I, you know, there's other intelligence failures related to it, but that piece of information, I think, was is, is unacceptable. And uh, that's... Again, my opinion. And then uh, I just want to, before I go into the lesson two plan, current events. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm taping this on Sunday. I think everyone's probably aware of what's the executive orders that have gone on in this past week. Um, there are legitimate, legitimate issues, and you'll talk about that in, the, in your future classes about, pardon me, about our visa program and about people overstaying their visas, and about scrutiny to people that overstay their visas or that are here, um, that travel from hot spots like Pakistan and, and, and other areas, and then come back here. Um, the, the, this is a, a worthy of scrutiny. Um, so I, 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 I do want to mention that that's probably a worthy of... of, of further analysis and might be a great paper topic in the future. However, what I want to emphasize is, do we do things that make us feel better as opposed to actually analyzing the security issues? Um, we could talk about border walls, which is an executive order this past week. We talk about the executive orders relating to, uh, to, to what we 
seen on Friday and what we've seen this past weekend. Uh, but is it again? Part of you being in this program is that you should be able to look at homeland security issues, terrorism issues with a lot more analytical rigor. And as I mentioned in the first course, unfortunately, emotion and what makes us feel better based on our, our base human instinct uh, kind of overplays it rather than the, the, the levels of analysis needed to, to uh, actually stop attacks from happening or actually make us safer. Uh, I'll let you decide whether we're playing too far into the emotional game or we're too, or these executive orders are the result of, of uh, analytical rigor being applied to, to issues of terrorism and homeland defense. Um, and as Forrest Gump said, that's all I'll say about that. So this this week, uh, again, presidential directives, executive orders, executive structures. Those are the three areas that the non-codified authorities uh, deal with. And in fact, just today, uh, we're talking about executive structures. They restructured the National Security Council, uh, just hearing reports that the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the DNI are no longer sit on the National Security Council or, in the, or serve in their regular capacity. Uh, I don't know how true those are. I'm just hearing what I hear on the news first thing this morning. So, uh, yeah, those, we're going to talk about executive structures uh, this this week. So, key documents: uh, Homeland Security Presidential D D Directive Five, Domestic Incidents, uh, that was written in 2003. Uh, that was by the Bush administration. Um, HSPD 7, Critical Infrastructure Protection, and that talks a lot about resiliency, it talks about defending, you know, key nodes like dams and, and electric um, and, and those types of issues. The PPDs by Obama, Presidential Directives, uh, they're still in effect, still in effect uh, until they're they're withdrawn. So again, look at those with, with scrutiny. And then the, the National Security Strategy and Homeland Security Strategy uh, documents as well. And when you're looking at those, uh, and, and this is brought up in the discussion, ask two questions. One, what are we leaving out? Because good strategy always, always leaves something out. Bad strategy tries to solve every problem under the sun. So that's, you know, when you're looking at those two strategy documents, ask what they're leaving out, and then ask, are we mustering resources, will, money, to solve the problem. And that, that essentially is what strategy is, how you can uh, muster your resources to solve a particular problem. Um, and so the question to ask while you're going through what natural national resources are being mustered to solve issues of terrorism, cybersecurity, and those types of things. So questions to think about when you're going through the, the lesson, why are these documents implemented? They're always in response to something uh, whether it's Hurricane Katrina, whether it's to 9-11, um, whether it's to the Sony hack, which some of the, the strategy documents deal with. Uh, are they still relevant? National security strategy was in 2010. Homeland security strategy was in 2007. Um, it's been a few years since then. And are they covering the right issues that we face now? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, does national security strategy and homeland security strategy apply resources to achieve objectives? Again, that's the whole point of strategy. What do these strategies leave out? And always ask those do those questions as you're uh, you're going through these these documents. And then finally, assignment uh, information paper on the key documents. Again, is just like last was on the the legislation. This paper will be on those will be summaries of those information papers uh, on those key documents. And make sure you again try and. Uh, uh, you know, cover what those documents say, but add one or two sentences of analysis based on some of these questions that, that I just brought up. So that covers lesson two, and I look forward to, uh, well, one, I'll have your uh, discussion paper graded as early as possible this week, uh, so you have the comments so you can do next week's discussion paper. If there's any questions or issues, don't hesitate to ask.